Hello everyone, my name is Adam Varn. I'm from the Tampa Bay Drupal Users Group and tonight we're going to be demoing Layout Builder for Drupal 8 um, and what it does, what it, you know, high level functionality of what it can do, that sort of thing. So um, Layout Builder is a module in Drupal Core. It's been added since 8. Drupal 8.5 and it consists of two modules, Layout Builder and Layout Discovery. And Layout Builder allows you basically through a UI to configure content types to display the fields the way you want with a layout that's drag and drop and that's all sort of cool um, functionality. So I'm going to go over what it is, how it functions, all that sort of stuff. And we will go from there. So basically, Layout Builder is very similar to Panels or Display Suite, if you're familiar with those modules. But it's in core. Um, and it's very easy to set up. Basically, once you enable the modules, there's no configuration settings or anything like that in the modules themselves. There are permissions, which we'll get to. But you go to the content type that you want to control. And then you go to Manage Display. And you will set the, by default, this is usually Layout Builder is not enabled. So you would go to your option, you say, um, use Layout Builder. So this is your standard field screen that you would normally see. If you want to use Layout Builder, you check this box. And then you also have the option of allow each content item to have its layout customized. So that basically means you can set a general style for all of the um, content type, or you can have individual nodes allowing to have their own content, you know, own layout. So we'll set this for this one, for this news um, content type that I created. And it's just a standard Drupal site, by the way, just nothing fancy to it. I just add a few admin functionality um, modules as well as a Drupal, um, as well as Devel. So we'll enable this by setting these two boxes. And now it's set. So now we go to manage layout. So what you're going to see now is a, my internet connection is unstable, so I apologize. What you're going to see now is a layout of the, the page and the items of your, your fields. So what you can do here is you click add section if you want to control the layout of how it functions. So you can set a one column, two column, three column, four column, however you'd like to do it. So we'll set a two column one for right now. So this adds a column, you choose the widths that you want to use. So we'll say 6733. So that's like a standard layout with a sidebar. And notice it says you have unsaved changes. So now we have two sections over here, a left and a right. And you click add block if you want to put things in there. Or you can also um, drag fields via the UI to where you want them to be. There's also this option to show content preview if you don't want to see different things. It'll just say the name of the field right here. You'll notice too that there's the standard um, icons over here to configure and, and set up everything. So you can configure this. So because now basically we don't have our standard field displays with the, the labels and all that sort of stuff, it's not, you know, because we don't have that page because layout builders overtaken that, this is where you would configure those things. Like if you want to show the label, you know, label hidden, visually hidden. It's the same fields, the same setup that you're used to in Drupal before using layout builder, but it doesn't have the, um, but it's now just in a different spot with the settings for each field. So we can say here, we'll drag our body field to this left column. And then we'll say we want to put our date field over in the right column. So now we have basically a two column layout right here comprised of the fields that we are that make up this content type body and date were fields that I created ahead of this meetup. Hit update for that. Or just close this out. We can also add more sections to the page. So basically there's nothing up here, nothing below it. This is basically how the page is going to look. And one thing to mention with Layout Builder is that it generally works by default in just the main content area. So the main content region in Drupal that you're familiar with is the area it does. It doesn't generally, without overriding the templates, it doesn't affect the header, the sidebar, that sort of stuff. You're basically just working in the main content area of a page in Drupal. Um, you can obviously set it to use different, you can change that if you want to with your regions, which we'll get to towards the end. But this is um, generally how it's set up to work. So now we have, say we have a section here, we want to put another section below this section. You obviously add section at the top, you want it above these two column, add section, we've gone below. So we'll say add section, and we'll just do a one column layout so we can put our image field into this add block area. So we have the image field here. But we can also add other things too, like actual blocks to the columns themselves. So we can say add block. 
And this isn't this general sense of what we always think of for a block in Drupal. There is the actual blocks themselves, like C tool blocks, content blocks, content fields, like the fields, like the authored on. General fields are basically any entity of the um, module or of, of a node are here and available. But also you can get other blocks too that come from views, a menu block, system blocks like breadcrumbs, that sort of thing. These can all be placed. What we normally see on the block layout page um, is placeable as a block. So we'll just put our at powered by Drupal over here. We don't want to set the title, so we'll just click add block. So what we're doing here is we're setting the general layout for the news content type. So this means that by default, all of the news content type items are going to be laid out like this. So we'll have our body on the left, our date on the right, and our Power by Drupal block on every note news page <laughs> at the bottom. So when we're done, we said save layout, and the layout's been saved, and that's it. So now if we go to our content, we'll look for some news. And here's a handy one. Put this into different browsers so we can see it. So now we can see that there's a, the title's up here, you have the body, we have the date field from those generated from Devel, and then the Powered by Drupal um, block over here. So this is how this page looks. And because I didn't place the image field anywhere, it's still just shoved down at the bottom. So now let's go back and change the, let's take off the image field. So say you have a field that you don't want to show up on a page, like you would normally hide it from display, like the hidden area of display. So now we just say, go here to the field and click remove block. Are you sure you want to remove this? So that seems a little scary, but you're not, not actually really removing it. You're just taking it off of the list of the display of this page. So if we click remove and we save it, we'll see it's gone. But if we want to put it back, go back into manage layout. We'll say add block, and now we'll put our image field, this one right here. And see again, we get our options for displaying a title. We don't want a title here, we want to do an image style, so we'll say full width. This will be one I created, it'll be full width of the um, area. We'll put the image field above the body. Habit of going down and clicking save. <laughs> Go to save. Go back and our image fields at the top. And it's the full width because of the image style I said. So it's the full width of this layout container that we put in here. The, um, now we can also go in and set this on the individual view mode settings as well. So if we have a different, like we're just doing the teaser or the full content. So we could actually set a different um, standard view modes in Drupal, like the default and teasers but we could also do different layouts for each of those. So we could do a different one for teaser if we wanted to. And you just layout builder here. So you can choose to use it or not use it on different view modes. Um, now, since we also have the option of changing our custom layout per node, because we checked this box, oh, each content I have to have its layout customized. We can go into this individual node and we have a tab up here that says layout. So now this is configuring this individual news content item for this news content item. This is not the, so it gives you a link right here if you wanna go back and change all of them, which is kind of dangerous if you have content people, but hopefully it won't be, <laughs> you, can, you can set this permission. Um, so let's say for this one, we don't want the image and we want the powered by Drupal over here. Actually, here, let's just, just for this particular node, let's add a section above here at one column. And then we will go in and add the image field back up here at the top. We'll do full width since this is the full width of the area. Add block. So now you notice we have another button up here too because we're in working with an individual node. So we have save layout, which is saves it. Discard changes basically undo, it's like kind of like an undo button for anything that you've just changed. So if you're working on a layout and then you want to undo what you just did, um, say you save it and you want to take that off, this is kind of like an undo go back button. 
revert to defaults means that you'll take this individual node back to the default for the, for the content type. So we'll click save layout because we want this one to be different. If we refresh it. Now, you're probably wondering why this is up here at the top and this is out down here different. Layout Builder does a lot of stuff for functionality, but it doesn't always do everything for your theming. If your sections and everything are not positioned correctly, you're gonna have to adjust things with theming or redo some of your organizations of your sections. So basically this one column section is not wide enough or is not full width enough to be able to push this down to the next thing. So we'd have to go back into our um, layout and change that around, you know, remove our things. But we'll just revert this one back to defaults just to show what it looks like. Are you sure you want to revert it? So this basically would lose any customizations you've done to that individual node. So now if we go back, we'll see that our days up here and everything is split into two columns. I've only played around with Layout Builder for a few hours, so there is some different um, options and there is some different configuration that I'm not sure exactly directly <laughs> how to fix this, um, the layout issue that I was just showing you, but there is a way to, I'm sure there's a way to do it if we go around and play with our layout, but I'm not gonna spend this meetup going over each individual thing trying to solve problems. Um, so just play around with layout better and I'm sure there's a way to fix it. I apologize for <laughs> not getting into the, the weeds on this too much. Um, so all of the fields are listed, but we can also add, like I said, blocks. You can also add what's called a, um, basically a specific block for the node or for the content type. Um, Drupal calls, Drupal calls it a custom block, but it's not a custom block in the sense of what we're used to under the structure block layout custom block library. This is just a, what I kind of am calling an inline block that is basically a block that just shows up specifically for this content type. It doesn't live on the block layout page um, as far as I was able to figure out. I'm hopefully not wrong. So we'll call this our test block. You see you have a nice little WYSIWYG editor and everything over here. And I will show you at the end, there's a module that actually fixes this to put this into much more manageable place for content editors. Um, hello world. Layout builder is cool. Display title, so we will keep our title here for the display block. You get our your format options and we, We'll put this up here above the date. Say we don't want to put that there, so we hit discard changes. So I don't want to, now I'm gonna go back and I'll, I don't want to do this. I don't really want to put that block there. So I'll just discard the changes just to show what this actually does. Go back to manage layout. And our block is gone. You can also filter by the block name, but my test block is not there, even though I titled it test block. So again, create a custom block. Rocks instead of cools. Add block. So now we drag it up here to the top and we do want to put it here this time. So we'll click save layout. So now we were editing the actual general content type for news. So now all of the news nodes will have this test block. But we can also, so basically the use case for those custom blocks is on an, if you have an individual node that you've overridden the layout for, you can create little inline blocks to put over the content on the page um, for, for a specific page, basically. Bear with me for a second. So how does this actually function in terms of the layout? Well, it is, everything is um, for the theming people, which would be me since I'm primarily a front end person. Layout Builder is, uses the Flexbox model for design. So it functions basically with just about every browser these days. I think IE9 is, if there's any of those still around, doesn't really um, handle Flexbox, but pretty much everything else since then does. So you're working with Flexbox, which basically means that you're going to get a fairly responsive design out of the box which is very, very cool to have that built into Drupal automatically. So you'll see here with our layout two column section, we have display flex. Our first region, we have a flex one 67%. And then our second region, 
flex one thirty three percent right here. And this is all this CSS is stored in the layout builder module. Um, so you can override or copy it if you need to, that sort of thing. But that's generally, you know, it's it basically is responsive out of the box for a lot of functionality. Which you may say, this is great for Bartik, but I don't use Bartik. Well, it does actually work well with fairly well with other mod with other themes. So I'm just gonna enable Bootstrap, which is by far the most popular, I think base theme for Drupal 8, so that's the default. Now we'll refresh our page here. So not perfect, but we're still in, you know, it still functions. We still have our layout classes. So I guess the thing I would caution any other front end people with this would be to just be careful that you don't go crazy, if, especially if you're using something Bootstrap Foundation, anything that has a predefined like set of classes for the grid columns to just keep in mind that the layout builder is putting that in there as well. So otherwise you're just gonna be fighting against what layout builder does um, when you're setting it up. I mean, obviously if we, if we turn off the search bar and block layout, this will make it full width and it'll look much better. And the reason I'm doing this will be evident in just a minute because there is one gotcha that has come up so far that I've found with layout builder. And that's that the, if we go into our um, content types, news, manage, display, everything's great, hunky-dory, we're in the seven admin theme, we go to manage layout, and it reverts to your theme, your actual live theme, your default theme for the layout. That can be problematic sometimes if you're trying to add things and the theme that you're using doesn't really work very well with this. As you can see, Bootstrap, doesn't really like these overlays and things like that. So actually, I don't even know how to get out of this because <laughs> just refresh the page. Um, the reasoning behind this, as far as I'm able to gather, is that they want to be able to make this tool as useful for content editors as possible so they can actually see what the page is gonna look like in the real theme and the real live layout. But there is not a way, even though we have in you know the general Drupal settings of appearance, you know, use default admin theme for when editing or creating content. Layout Builder basically ignores this. It does, there's not a way to do it yet. Now we're using Drupal 8.75, so Layout Builder is fairly, fairly new, a few versions back. But right now there's not, there's discussion about adding it to core, but it will probably come from a layout, from a contrib module that might give us a way to use the admin theme for managing this. Um, so keep that in mind too, if you're gonna turn this over to content people. But at the end of this, I'm gonna go over a few list of modules that show that can maybe help advance this, so make it a little bit easier for getting around this this bug. Um, the, so yeah, like I said, this, this is one of the things I've not been happy with Layout Builder so far, just to play around with it. Um, because it doesn't, it's you know really hard to configure it. So you may want to set all this up first before you turn on your theme, if that's possible when you're setting everything up. Um, if not, you know, try to work around it. There is um, options, you know, I think just by setting, making sure that your page looks okay. But the, well, yeah, hopefully this will be addressed fairly soon. Um, the other basic function, functionality of this is, I mean, this is basically what Layout Builder does. So we can add, add sections to set our grids and our layouts, our columns that are responsive with Flexbox. We can also do add fields, add blocks, add custom blocks. We can configure the settings of an individual field, just like we would on a normal managed display page. Um, and that's really something that was never around in Drupal core. You know, we never really had this functionality without add-on modules like panels or display suite. Um, so it, it really is a pretty powerful and functional tool. The, but there are some other things to consider with this for um, other things to think about. Like if you're, especially if you manage a site that has a lot of content or you have a lot of people managing the content, you may say, okay, great. So I'm gonna give these content people the ability to edit individual nodes. How, well, how do I know which nodes have been overridden from the standard layout? You would think that would be something that's pretty evident from here, but it's not. There, but there is a way I found to do it. If we go to structure views and we add a view, Layout Builder is exposed to views. So we can go to 
layout overrides. We call layout overrides. We'll just leave it, we'll say the news because that's what we've been working with. I mean, create a page or we create a block. I'll just make it its general display for right now. You'll get, you know, right now we have our news titles, but we can add a filter in here. We type in layout, layout builder layout. We choose this and configure filter criteria. If we set this to is not empty, which basically means that there's something there, we can see that there's an overridden page. We can see that there's overridden pages. So we don't have any overridden pages right now. But let's say we go into one of our pieces of content. Go back to good consect your Destinio El Probo, whatever. <laughs> Change our layout. We will remove the test block just for this page. Remove. See again, this doesn't really work. Doesn't play well with Bootstrap. Save layout. We'll update our preview. Boom, we've got our ones right here. So now we can see these nodes. Now I don't have a lot of stricter filters on here. This is, you could probably do other filtering on here to get this more specific um, for your things. But you could create a very, very easily created a page that shows the layout, the pages that were overridden from layouts. Um, so if you needed to manage them later on, like you would pre previously on, you know, with Panelize or something else that had a specific list of, um, overridden pages that overrode the defaults, this is a way, to, this is a quick and dirty way to build it um, and manage what you're, you know, what you're trying to do. Now, say you want to actually disable Layout Builder overall. Say you don't want to use it anymore for a specific content type. What you have to do, and this is, again, why this a list like this is very important, is you would, you have to go to your content types, go to Manage Display, and if you say, oh, I want to take off Layout Builder for news, you can't do this until you revert, you must revert all customized layouts to disable this option. So that means all of these individual nodes that were overridden to be able to disable layout builder, you have to go in and revert them back to the default. So we have this one for right now. So if I click revert to defaults. It's going to default this back to the default layout we had for news. Click revert. Now, if we go back in here, refresh the page. Now we can uncheck these boxes, or we can uncheck the individual content one. Save it. All that stuff that we did for layout is gone, and we're back to square one with a standard Drupal layout page. Um, other things that to consider with this would be that you want to um, make sure when you're planning out your site that you set these layouts as well as you, you know, plan them ahead as best as you can. You also want to be careful who you give permissions to change the individual layouts. Luckily, there is a permissions option for Layout Builder. It's a little oddly worded, but it is um, configure any layout and create an edit custom block. So basically you can configure, this gives them the option to configure any layout at all um, and also create an edit custom blocks. That means give people the ability to add the inline blocks that I was showing, the custom blocks. So you want to make sure you give people your right, your users the right privileges to edit this sort of thing, because otherwise you could have a great big mess of content layouts <laughs> on your on your hands. Um, the other, oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was how this actually works with, say you want to extend the way the layout works. So say we'll go to basic page, which I had is not using layout builder. Uh, which want to be customized. So say you wanted to add different um, layouts than what they give you. So you have this manage layout, you have the add section, but say you don't want one, two, three, or four column, you want a you know, partial column up here, partial column here. This is all actually extendable through the um, layouts.yaml files that come with your, that you can put into your theme. And you can also do this through, which goes into Twig. So, a very handy Drupal.org. Docs eight. I apologize, I'm typing this off of my phone. Layout API. This gives you doc documentation on how to make your new layouts. And I'm not gonna get into all this because it's very 
it can get very he technical, but basically you basically make a dot layouts dot YAML file in your theme or your module and you can set it up this way. And it's very simple to make. So if you want to make a new one column, you call it one column, you do the layouts and then you name the template. So it'd be like one column dot layouts dot YAML in your templates folder of your theme and you label it, you know, which regions it goes in. This is also how you could create different layouts for um, non main content areas. So if you wanted to do something for the header or the footer, that sort of thing, um, this is how you could create new ones because then once you're in here, you can register this. You can also insert twig to call the names of your templates. So just like any other twig template for your theme, you can use this to put them in here. And this is basically, as the Drupal.org says, it's the simplest, easiest way to register a new layout. For most cases, you don't need anything further. But if you want to get real fancy, you can create a layout with drag and drop off regions so you can move the regions around. This tells you how to do that. Register your own template with a, with a hook. Um, there's also more, you can add it through libraries if you have other things. Also, how to get a fancy icon that you want to put in here. Ex explanation for this. This is the um, Drupal.org docs API layout API. Just search for layout API on Drupal.org and you'll find it. And there's also this other very useful blog articles and a video here to show you how to do it. This also tells how you can render it, how to pull different things from um, different layouts. Very useful for that. So you would just basically put all those customized files in your theme folder and then you would have your own fancy fancy layout. Um, there are some other modules that are, you know, because Layout Builder is still fairly new, that are pretty useful to, I think they're going to be useful for this module and will probably be there as they grow. Um, the first one is called Layout Library. This basically lets you set for content editors a set list of layouts so you don't give them the ability to do anything under the sun. You can pick a library and set it to define it to different on a per content or per content item basis. This works with Layout Builder as well. So you basically just set your layouts that you want to do and you can assign it to specific content editors and site admins. I have not worked with this one, but I imagine it was very useful. It's got a decent amount of installs for Layout Builder being so fresh. Um, which is always a good thing to judge is the installs. Layout Builder Enhancements. This is where the work appears to be coming for overriding the default theme to basically allowing you, this module is based, the maintainer of this module is working to put it, um, this functionality of using the admin theme into his module, Layout Builder Enhancements. So this module gives you other functionality like this, a view block with off, a Mac offset calculation, Layout Builder Preview. This is very early development but it's active as of today, August 1st. So this was last update in June. Um, so it is, it's very active development. Um, is also similar to the first one, Layout Builder Library, Layout Builder Restrictions. This lets you restrict which blocks are available to show up in a layout. There's another module called Block Blacklist that restricts these, but this basically works with Layout Builder as well. So you can choose you don't, you, if you don't want the Powered by Drupal block to show up, you can disable that one from showing up and being in these layouts. It means that the, the user can pick. So again, this for content editors, this is something that's very useful. The whole point of Layout Builder is to make life easier for content people because you have people who don't need to nerd, learn the entire ins and outs of Drupal to maintain the site. They just need to post their content and be happy with how it looks. So that's what Layout Builder and these modules are really working for. Um, the other and final one I want to go over was Layout Builder Modal, which lets you pop up the, in a modal window, the custom block field. So say you want to add block, create custom block. This will pop this hard to read thing up in a nice modal window for the editors to work from. So it's like a pop-up window for the um, content editors to work with to paste, post their content as opposed to having to try to cram into this teeny tiny little space over here and be super frustrated and you know that sort of stuff. Um, so it just depends, you know, I haven't 
tested this one on Bootstrap or anything to see how it works, but I imagine it's probably going to work pretty well because it's just a modal window and Bootstrap's modals are pretty, pretty good. Um, but these, all these contrib modules are going to work, and I'm sure there'll be more greater ones coming soon that will work well towards making Layout Builder even more valuable to Drupal. So I'm going to try to juggle this now with our live audience that I have here in Tampa with our Tampa meetup and also our Zoom audience, which is also comprised of people from Tampa. <laughs> so does anyone have any questions? Anybody? Okay. I, is the question was, is the modal window keyboard friendly? Um, that I know of. I don't know. Let's just check, let's check the, there's nothing in the issue queue for this module, which only has 170 installs, but was updated yesterday. So it's pretty active. Um, I imagine, I'm sorry. If it wasn't a keyboard ready? Yeah, yeah possibly. Um, I mean, I would assume because it's basically just popping everything over into a keyboard window or into a modal window, it would, the, the tabs inside of the, you know, the content, there, the CK editor would probably work fine. But it's one of those you kind of probably got to try it and see sort of thing. Uh, can you export to these layouts to code so that they can be reported? Oh, that's a good question. The question was can we export, export layouts to, um, code through configuration synchronization. I would, let's check. I am looking to see. I do not see it here. Let's do a quick. That's not anything close to what I'm wanting to see. So I'm going to say the answer to that is no for right now, but that would be a very cool functionality. And because it's in Drupal core, I imagine it's at least somewhat extendable to do that sort of thing. But right now I don't see any options in here under config, general configuration. So I would think it would be its own configuration type, but I don't see anything else that it would possibly be. I mean, entity view display. No. Really, it does remind me of panel. Like, yeah, it is. It's very, very similar. Entity or lab builder is very similar to panels for sure. Um, So the question is, can, how do you install the layout builder files? You put them, so yes, you do have to have layout builder installed yeah, okay. to be able to use it. You can't, you can't just put YAML files into your theme without it. I think you have, because so Drupal's not, it's, it's attached to core. So it's, it has to be put in there for core to register it. Yeah, because otherwise I don't think Drupal's gonna, yeah, I don't think Drupal's gonna know what to do with it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there is no panels for Drupal 8 as far as I'm aware. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, maybe there is, but I don't know why someone would want to recreate that if there's this. And panels was good, but it, it was very bloated, I think. Yes. So the question is, is what who, who the audience for layout for layout builder? It's it's for front end and for like, for content editors, I would say. Yeah, it is. It is definitely. 
it makes it easier for content people to work with because people you don't always have in especially large organizations you don't always have people who touch code who you want to have access to the code mm -hmm. right so that's so this gives them more flexibility like you would previously have with panels or display suite but it's not it's on a node level and it can be con you know configured through drupal yes yeah, so you can define libraries of Correct. Yeah. So you can define your own libraries for this for each each top. Are you showing uh inserting a one off inline HTML block with WYSIWYG editor mm -hmm. and other things like an image one off? It has to not 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 the Drupal image that was on the thing. Like not the image field, but just a random So the question is can you add different um for the one off inline blocks, can we add something besides just a text field? I'm, it's basically like a general block used to be in Drupal 7. So it's just a title and a body field. So you could put the image into the body field. Okay, but yeah. But it's not. You can't do PHP in Drupal 8, no. Because even on the Twig level, it's that's why they use Twig, because Twig is taken off, taken out PHP completely. You don't, you don't see it at all. Twig processes it all for you. Um, so, but if you have some kind of custom block, you could add it. You can access any blocks that are on Drupal that Drupal has access to. So, if you make a, if you go to structure block layout custom block library and make it to make your own block, you can make a view. You can make a block. You can anything anything that so the Drupal anything that's a Drupal block is can be put in there in the layout builder. So you can make a view, you can make a block that's just an image, you, but you can, the inline blocks are for specifically that one node without having to go through the process of sending someone to the block page to make a block and put it there and then place it all that way. This is, that gives you basically, cuts out that whole step for them. But the trade off to that is it's not a registerable block. So you don't have it for reuse on another page. You have to recreate it on that individual page. So you cannot do it at the content type level? You can do it at the content type level. That's what I did for this, this news example. But you don't. You can do custom the custom inline blocks on the content type or the individual node level. But if you do them, if you make them there, they don't show up as blocks on the block layout page. They'll show up on the content type and they'll show up on that node, but they're not going to show up anywhere else because they're specifically for that piece of content. It's basically like an entity that gets attached to that piece of content. So yeah, so it, it would be like a like a call out, like a call out, call to action sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so if you had a specific page that you wanted to call to action for, that would be where. Correct. You could have an inline one-off block for that one particular page, a coupon on this product or something like that. Like you could go to that product and put something there. Right, and if they want, if you wanted to put something that was on all of the content type, you could still do that inline block, and it would show up on all those as well. But it wouldn't be on the, um, or you just make a general block which could be registered and usable anywhere else in Drupal. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if I wanted to give them an ability to. Uh, insert something like a card, which would be like an image, title, a little description, or mm -hmm. something like that. I, which would be a field, image field, a title field, and a body field, right? Basically, right? Mm -hmm. Paragraphs, you kind of do that, right? No, oh, that was the other, that was one of the other modules I wanted to go over was the paragraph blocks. Um, layout builder wouldn't let me do, it just kind of lets you put that in the square, right? It doesn't actually let you help, like, create a layout for a, a card. Well, no. you can um you can oh. create a custom block type and set the fields yeah, there and so um the person who's listening as well so that you can create a custom block type and put it there um so yes you could create a custom block type and then put that at the content type level at the content type level yeah because the custom type block custom block library you can create block types which have your own set of fields okay now but this is this would be registered through a regular block. It wouldn't be you'd still have to make have to make the block somewhere else. But the paragraph blocks, this module allows you to use it for core layout builder to put um, 
basically you can add a paragraph type so they can add their own paragraph to this. So with basically with using layout builder and paragraphs, you could give them that option. You, you make a paragraph type that has those fields that you want. You extend this as a, a paragraph item block and then put that block in on the content on the layout builder and they can do it that way. So you're basically kind of, you'd be building your own sort of inline thing with, um, with paragraphs with the fields that you want to do. You make a block on the note that's only for that note, right? Yes, yes, yeah, so you can make a, that for a content type? yes. Oh. But, it, and you can make it as a block that's not registered in the rest of Drupal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's, it's for content editors to be able to put, oh, I have to have this picture on this one page. Okay, we'll make a block, put your picture there, you're done, you know. Yeah. Yeah, content editors, we love you, but you're not always the most technical people. <laughs> yeah, and trying to teach a content editor Drupal and how every field works and how the back end, all that sort of stuff is. Exactly, yeah, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a content person's. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> you still have to know how the elevator works to make it go up. <laughs> so yes, I think pair, I think layout builder is going to be a really useful tool for Drupal. I think it's going to get extended even further with the contrib modules and hopefully other functionality added to Drupal core um, as it goes along. Because like I said, some of those little gotchas, not being able to see the overwritten blocks, not being able to see, um, you know, edit things in the in the admin theme. Can be a little overwhelming for people especially if you don't plan out the layout builder so well enough and, and your theme is maybe more involved is there any other questions well thank you everybody hope you enjoyed this um presentation I apologize if there's any weird audio going on here and hopefully this all came through from panera's wi-fi so thank you and uh keep watching our videos thank you Thank you, Sarah. I have no idea who you are, or where you're from, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hey. <laughs> We're um. Are you in? Are you in Florida, Sarah? I'm in Orlando. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we had a bunch of people joining this meeting. Like, I had someone join this meeting at two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, the meeting hasn't started yet. I don't know why people are coming. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad actually someone actually came live. So I'm going to post this live, or I'm going to post this to YouTube tomorrow zoom records it and then it'll be posted on youtube and i'll post it on the groups.drupal.org slash florida page to let people watch it later on awesome so thank you so much appreciate it you're yeah, welcome you. and um i'm gonna end the meeting so thank you all for joining have a good night Bye.